a series that is called Dangerous Prayers. I shared this last week. It's based on a book written by Pastor Craig Rochelle called Dangerous Prayers. And the subtitle of that book says, Because Following Jesus Was Never Meant to Be Safe. And the subtitle of that book is really what captured my attention, because I just believe that's true. I believe that God calls us to take steps of faith, to walk in the deep, to do bold things that allows us to see him at work in us and through us. I just believe that God wants to do incredibly big things through us. And I believe that, capable, that God is capable of doing immeasurably more than we can ever ask or imagine. And I believe that most of the time, I believe that most of the time, God is simply waiting on us to be willing to surrender our lives and to take steps of faith so that he can show up in big ways in our lives. I said last week, I wonder what would happen if we as a body of believers just committed to stepping out in faith and doing some things that, only, that we could only accomplish if God is in the midst of that. So we're considering what it would look like for us to pray three dangerous prayers. Three prayers. If we begin to pray them, I just believe that God's going to show up in our lives and in our church in some very powerful ways. Last week, we looked at how the early church prayed in Acts chapter 4 and Peter and John, they're facing some serious opposition. And and when they share that with the church, we read that the church prayed. But they didn't pray the kind of prayer that I often find myself praying when I find myself in trouble, when I'm faced with uncertainty or difficulty. When things come against me, my immediate reaction usually is to pray, to go to God in prayer. but, But usually my prayer is, God, would you take me out of this? God, would you deliver me from this? Would you remove that obstacle? Would you deliver me from the storm? When the early church in chapter 4 hears about this hostility, this oppression coming against them, this, this wave coming against them, their response was to pray. But they didn't pray, God, deliver us. They didn't say, God, take away the storm, get us out of this mess, rescue us. They said, God, would you help us endure the storm? Would you be with us through it? God, would you make us bold? And as we read on, we just see the church explodes and God does some remarkable things through a group of ordinary believers that simply prayed this prayer, God make us bold. And so I I gave you this challenge last week to pray this prayer on a daily basis, God make me bold today. May I have the faith to believe that you're going to show up and do what only you can do, God make me bold. Today we're going to look at another dangerous prayer and, and this prayer is found in the Old Testament. It's a prayer from a a young boy, and yet it's a prayer that I just believe requires a great deal of courage to really pray. A little backstory on our passage this morning. Samuel's mother, Hannah, was unable to have children, and she was distraught over this. And so in 1 Samuel chapter 1, we read this prayer from Hannah. She prays this, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life. And God answers her prayer. She gets pregnant and she gives birth to a baby boy and she names him Samuel. And when he's somewhere around three to to five years old, Hannah follows through on her promise and she takes Samuel to the temple and she says this to Eli the priest, "Uh, I prayed for this child and the Lord granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord for his whole life he will be given over to the Lord. So Samuel makes, begins this life of really of dedication to God and to the temple and he begins working for the priest Eli. He begins being mentored by the priest Eli and over the next seven or eight years he continues just to learn under the tutelage of Eli. The problem is as you read on in chapters one and two in there and uh, Eli has not been honoring God. His family was out of control. Eli was not disciplining his sons when they were committing just known uh, terrible sins when they were taking advantage of the people and the sacrifices that were being made to God. In fact, in chapter 2, it says that Eli's sons were scoundrels. I don't know about you, I don't want to be called a scoundrel. That sounds pretty bad. They were called scoundrels. They were increasingly sinning against God and the people, and yet Eli did not stop them. And so one day, this young boy, most scholars would say was around 11 or 12 years old, He goes to bed and the Lord speaks to him and he says, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel wakes up and he hears his name and his first thought is, who is that? He didn't recognize it as the voice of the Lord. So he goes into Eli's room and he says, did you call me? Did did you say my name? And and the priest responds probably a lot like I would if one of my kids come into my room and say, hey, dad, dad, did you call me? No, get back in bed. I'm trying to sleep, right? The priest says, no, go back to bed. And so he goes back to bed. 
And a second time, the voice of the Lord said, Samuel, Samuel. And he woke up startled and he runs back into the priest's room. Did you call me? Did you, did you call my name? And again, the priest says, no, go back to bed. The third time, the voice of the Lord says, Samuel, Samuel. And so Samuel runs back again into the priest's room. And this time the priest realizes that maybe, just maybe, God is speaking to Samuel. And so he tells Samuel, if you hear your name again, what I want you to do is I want you to stop. And I just want you to tell God that you want to hear from him. Tell him that you're his servant and that you're listening. And that's kind of where we're going to pick up this morning. So if you have a Bible and you want to follow along, we'll have it on the screen as well. We're going to be looking at 1 Samuel chapter 3, beginning in verse 10. And Samuel responds to God with what I believe is really a dangerous prayer. We're going to look at 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 10 through 14, and this is the word of God. The Lord came and stood there, calling as the other times, Samuel, Samuel. And then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, see, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. At that time, I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His sons blasphemed God, and he failed to restrain them. Therefore, I swore to the house of Israel, or the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or offering. Would you pray with me? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, once again, we thank you for your word. God, I thank you for the ways that your word challenges us, that it reveals who you are and the ways that you have called us to live life. And so this morning, Lord God, as we dig into this dangerous prayer that's really prayed by just this young boy and the things that you've asked him to do, God, I just pray that you would help us to see your truth and the ways you're calling us to pray. Would you open up our eyes, our ears, and our hearts once again this morning, God, that we would see you, that we would hear you, but most of all, God, that we would know you. We ask it in Jesus' name, amen. So Samuel prays this prayer, speak for your servant is listening. And and again, Samuel 11, 12 years old, this is a young boy who prays this incredibly dangerous prayer, speak, I'm listening. What's interesting to me as I read this story is when Samuel says, speak, I'm listening, God gives him a message, but it's not an easy message to hear. God gives Samuel what I think is, is, has to be a very uncomfortable message. And what I think most of us realize as we read through the Bible is most of the times when God speaks and he gives an assignment, is it ever an easy assignment? It doesn't ever seem like it's an easy assignment. It seems like when God speaks and he calls someone to do something, almost every time it's it's this incredible, if not impossible, task that he's asking of them. Think about it. There was Noah. God calls Noah and he says, I want you to build an ark. Okay, what's an ark, right? And so God gives him these detailed instructions on what it looks like to build this massive boat. And then not just build this boat, but what's he supposed to do? Collect two of every kind of animal. And then he's supposed to have his family come on board. And then they're going to repopulate the earth. I mean, okay, that's an easy assignment. No, not, right? How about Jonah? Jonah, I want you to go and I want you to preach to the most wicked, perverse, violent people alive. And I want you to tell them, repent or you're going to die. That's not an easy assignment, right? Moses, I want you to go into Israel, and I want you to tell Pharaoh, you're going to let my people go. Okay? New Testament, an angel of the Lord appears to Mary, a teenage girl, and he says, Mary, you're going to give birth to a son. I know you're unmarried and you're a virgin, but you're going to give birth to a son. Not just any son, you're going to give birth to the Son of God, the Savior of the world. See, every time God would speak and he gives someone an assignment in Scripture, it would challenge their faith, it would stretch them. It was never easy to hear. If you have the faith and the courage to pray this prayer, speak, I'm listening. When God does speak, I hope you know that he may convict you, that his voice may challenge you, that when he asks you to do what he, may, what he asks you to do may seem completely impossible. What I can promise you is when you pray that prayer and God speaks, his voice is going to stretch you and teach you to depend on him and to live with an even greater faith. This young boy prays this prayer. Speak, God, I'm listening. 
And unfortunately, what God doesn't say to Samuel is, okay, now that I've got your attention, this is the message that I want you to to share. I want you to announce that I'm going to pour out all my blessings on Israel, that good things are coming, that this is going to be great for Israel. That's not the message he gives to Samuel. What he says to Samuel, this young boy, 11 or 12 years old, he said, Eli, your mentor, the priest, has been sinning against me. What he's doing is not right. He hasn't turned his heart or the people's heart back toward me. Therefore, I'm going to judge his household. I'm going to judge this nation. And I'm trusting you, a young boy, to help carry this message. God says, so that I can make things right. And think about the burden that that would have been for Samuel to have to carry. It's a weight that God trusted to this young boy. See, it's a dangerous prayer to pray that prayer. Speak, I'm listening. So I, I want to challenge us to begin praying this prayer. But before you agree to make this prayer your prayer, before you begin to pray this prayer to God, speak, I'm listening, I want to warn you that it is a dangerous prayer. And I want to give you three things to contemplate before you commit to praying this prayer. And the first is this. Don't speak, don't pray, speak, I'm listening, unless you actually want to hear what God has to say. Samuel had put himself in a position to hear what God had to say. At first he thought it was Eli, so, but, and he went to Eli, but Eli kind of redirected him. And, but when he paused to be still and actually listen for the voice of God, Samuel heard the voice of God. Sometimes we pray to God and we already have an answer in mind. You ever do that? You're praying for something, but you already know how you want God to answer that prayer. And God, I really need you to come through for me on this. And let me tell you exactly how you can do that. This is what I want you to do, right? We kind of do that sometimes. We pray, but we don't really listen for what God wants to say. Other times we pray and we just don't take the time to listen. Or or maybe we just don't want to hear what God has to say. Maybe it's intentional, but most of the time I would guess that we just don't take time to be still to really listen for the voice of God. Here's the thing that, that we, know, we know this to be true. Have any of you ever had a friend or, or you've, you've gotten to this place where every time they call you, you know they're calling you because they want something? You, just, you see the number pop up and you're like, oh man, here we go again, right? They just want something. And that's okay sometimes, but we need friends that, it's a two-way conversation, right? We need good friends that we can kind of share with each other and they're willing to listen to us and, and they want to hear what's, hey, what's going on in your world? How can I help you? We, it's a two-way conversation, a good relationship, one with intimacy and closeness is one where the friend reaches out to you, not, not just because they want something from you. Now you're happy to help them out, but it's a two-way conversation. And what I'm getting at is sometimes there's more talking than listening when it comes to prayer. For some of us, maybe it's because we're just not comfortable with the silence. We just feel like we've got to fill up the whole time. We've got to keep talking. And, and I want you to know it's actually okay for us in prayer time just to speak. I'm listening. And to be still. And to listen. And give God space to speak to us. In fact, sometimes that's all prayer is. God, I'm listening. And then we sit back and wait on God to speak. Listen, if you're going to make that your prayer, though, you better be ready to listen because God will speak. God will speak. The question is, are you listening? You see, God is a speaking God. So you may say, okay, I'm in. I know it's a dangerous prayer, but I want to pray that prayer. And and again, the first thing I would encourage you to do is to be still before God, to actually pause, to rest in his presence so you can hear him speak. In fact, Psalm 46 tells us how to experience the presence of God. And and let me tell you what it doesn't say. It doesn't say, be frantic and you will know that I am God. Be busy and you will know that I am God. Seek me on the go and you will experience me. That is not what that passage says. It actually says this in Psalm 46. Be still and know that I am God. I just wonder, when was the last time you paused? And you were just still before God. You shut everything down, you turned your phone off, you just, in the quiet, you just sat and you were still before God. Maybe spend an hour just soaking up the presence of God, listening for his voice. Be still and know that I am the Lord God. In fact, Jesus said this about prayer. He said, don't, when you pray, don't be like the Pharisees who go out and they make sure everyone hears exactly what they're saying and they're loud and boisterous. Don't be like that. Jesus says, I want you to go into a prayer closet. I want you to find this place where nobody else is. I want you to shut yourself off from everything else. And in the quietness and the stillness of that place, I want you to cry out to me. That's how Jesus instructs us 
to pray, to be alone, to get into his presence, to listen. Be still and know that I am God. Listen, it's a dangerous prayer to pray, speak, I'm listening. So you might say, okay, so Jason, am I going to hear the audible voice of God? You might. Now, I got to tell you, I have never heard the audible voice of God. I, there have been times God has spoken to me, and it's been as close to an audible voice as, I, as I've ever heard. But I know people who have heard an audible voice from God. But let me tell you, God speaks to me in multiple different ways. I hear God through his word. When I read the Bible and I study it, there are times when scripture just jumps off the page at me. And it's like, that has to be God speaking that into my life. God also speaks through people. He might speak to you through a message. He he might speak to you through a song that someone else wrote. God might speak to you through a close friend. God has given me clear messages through a friend or a fellow pastor. He often speaks to me through Amanda. There are many times God speaks to me through my wife, through Amanda. God will speak to you through people. He'll also speak to you through circumstances. And this this is really cool when this happens. When you're praying for something and a door just suddenly opens and you're like, wow, okay. Or maybe that door gets shut and you're disappointed and you're discouraged and, but all of a sudden another door opens up and, and you walk through that door and suddenly you realize God shut a door because he didn't want you to take that door. He wanted you to take this one. It was so much better than what you thought that door was going to be. God speaks to us through circumstances. See, it's not a question of will God speak. All through scripture we see it. God is a speaking God. The question is, are you ready to hear from him? Do you want to hear what God has to say? The next thing is this. Don't pray, speak, I'm listening, unless you're ready to do what God asks of you. In other words, don't don't pray this prayer unless you're willing to obey God when he speaks. Don't pray that prayer unless you're committed to actually doing what he tells you to do. Samuel prays this prayer. Speak for your servant is listening. And God calls Samuel to do something that was extremely difficult for him to do. 11, 12 years old, this could not have been what he wanted to hear. This was not a fun assignment. Yet as you read on in this chapter, even though it's difficult, we see that Samuel obeyed God. You see, sometimes we approach prayer like we're going to a vending machine, right? Like, I'm going to pop in a couple quarters, I'm asking for this, and I'm expecting this to come out. And that's not how God works. We're, We're not praying to get God to do what we want God to do. It's a prayer of submission and surrender, and allowing him to transform our will to his will. Instead of, God, I need you to do this. I want you to do this. It's, it's God, I'm opening myself up to whatever it is you want to do. And God, if my will's not your will, would you change my will? Would you align my will with your will? What if instead of going to God in prayer with a list of demands, and listen, man, I can be guilty of this too. What if instead of going to God with a list of demands, what if we just went before him with a blank sheet of paper? Speak, God, I'm listening. What is it you want to do? What do you want me to do? And I got a blank sheet of paper and a pen or a pencil, and I'm just listening. And then we're willing to apply when God speaks. See, prayer is a means for us to submit to God's will, not our will. I don't know, I don't know what you might pray for or ask God for, but maybe your marriage is in a tough spot right now. And so you just pray this prayer, God, how can I love my spouse better that's not really loving or honoring you? God, how are you calling me to live this out? And then you just listen. Maybe it's, God, I don't want to just come to church. I want to be the church. God, can you you show me? Will you speak to me? Show me how I can serve to honor you within the church. Maybe it's, God, what, what do I have that would bless someone else? Where do you want me to be generous? Who is it today that needs a a word of encouragement? God, speak. I'm, I'm listening. Your servant is listening. Now, this is very important. Whatever you do, whatever you do, make sure when God speaks that you obey him. You see, I think sometimes we struggle to hear from God because God spoke to us and he gave us a command and he asked us to do something and we didn't follow through. God has given us something to do and we've ignored him or we've just pushed him off. We've resisted it. And listen, God's only going to do that so many times. If you're not going to listen to me, okay. And I wonder if sometimes we don't hear from God because we never actually did what he told us to do in the first place. So when God speaks, when he gives you command, when he tells you to do something, be willing to obey what he says. Here's the last thing. Don't pray, speak, I'm listening, unless you've prepared to hear what God has to say. 
I want you to look at 1 Samuel 2, 26 with me. If you have your Bible, I'm going to read it for you. Before Samuel prayed that prayer, speak, I'm listening. I want you to see what it says in 1 Samuel chapter 2 about Samuel and his relationship with God. It says this, And the boy Samuel continued to do what? To grow in stature and in favor with the Lord and with people. You see, Samuel continued to grow in his relationship with God. And it was that intimacy with God that prepared him for the task that God gave him. Remember, prayer is about a relationship with God. And we're speaking to a loving Father. And God wants us in that relationship. In fact, we looked at this in our last series. God created us to be in relationship with Him. Sometimes there's this thought that God is distant and He doesn't really want to connect with us at all. And and honestly, that He's mad at us for messing up. That's not the picture that we see in Scripture about God. In fact, the Bible is how God chose to reveal himself to us. And and the picture that he reveals in Scripture is very different. They are those of a loving father that wants to extend grace to his children. Hebrews 4.16 says, So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. God wants us to walk intimately with him, to really know him. Because when we don't really know God, we often resist talking to him. When we don't really know God, it's difficult to really trust God. Especially when he asks you to do some really difficult things, when he asks you to take some big steps of faith. But, but I just believe the more that you get to know God, the more you spend time with him, the, the more intimate that relationship is, the more you're going to learn to trust God. The more willing you are to step out in faith. The easier it becomes to hear him when he speaks. The easier it becomes to obey him because it's all about a relationship with God. It's like every other relationship that we have. The more time that we spend together, the more we understand each other. See, Amanda and I, we're at 24 years of marriage, right? Making sure I got that right. I don't want to get in trouble later. It'll be 25 next July. I'm pretty excited about that. I understand Amanda so much better today than I did 24 years ago. And if you've been married, you know what I'm talking about. There are times today that I can look at her and I know what she's thinking before she says it. There are times 24 years ago I would have said something I shouldn't have said because I didn't know that look. (laughs) But we've grown in our relationship, our intimacy. We know each other. It's so much easier for me to understand where she's coming from. It's so much easier for me to hear her when she speaks. And the same is true of our relationship with God. We need to prepare ourselves. We need to grow in our relationship with him. If we want to hear God speak and we want God to show up in some powerful ways Hey, just open yourself up to him. Dig into his word. Spend time in prayer. Spend time in worship. Make yourself available to what God wants to say and do in your life. Grow in your relationship with him. When you speak, when you pray, speak, Lord, I'm listening. You need to know that that is a dangerous prayer. Because again, as you read through scripture, I don't know if ever there's a time when God called someone to do something. When someone made that their prayer and God spoke. And it was an easy assignment. I don't know that that's anywhere in Scripture. I think every time we see it, when God speaks, it's a dangerous, difficult, almost impossible task. See, God may spur you to do something that you don't feel qualified to do. You may pray that prayer and God may call you to lead a small group. And you think, man, I don't know enough about the Bible. I'm not too sure about that. You're scared to death about the thought of leading a small group. But but God clearly says to you, hey, I want you to lead a small group. Maybe God is, is leading you to go back to school or to change careers, or to invite your boss to come to church. Maybe he's inviting you to be bold about your faith, just to share that with someone. Maybe to social media, just to come out and and declare who you are and your faith in him, or to forgive someone that wronged you even when they don't deserve it. You see, it's a dangerous prayer. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Last week, I invited you to just join me in praying, make us bold. And this week, I would would love to challenge you, if you would have the courage, the faith, to just pause before you start every day and just pray this prayer. Speak. I'm listening, Lord. Give him time to speak and make that your prayer. Lord, speak to me today. God, I give you permission. Whatever it is you want to say, Whatever it is you're asking me to do, God, would you give me the courage to walk in obedience? Would you speak? Would you help me to hear your voice? Lord, speak to me. I'm listening. And you know what just may happen? You know what I believe is going to happen? 
God's going to speak.